Nathan here with Dude I Love or Hate My Ride and we're way up in the Rocky Mountains with my friend Storm and your 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. Awesome stuff because this is a slightly modified vehicle that already kicks ass off-road and Storm is going to tell us all about his vehicle and his buying experience and we're going to do some off-roading. Hey guys you've probably seen our 2004 Volkswagen Tour before. Well, before we bought it, we ran it through Car Vertical's VinCheck. Before you buy your next vehicle, get a 20% discount on a Car Vertical vehicle report by clicking on the link below. The detailed vehicle history will list any theft, accident, insurance claim, and maintenance issue with the car or truck you want to purchase. Peace of mind never costs so little. Well, we're going to take you around the vehicle because he's done some really smart things, minor things I would say, but smart things in order to augment its ability to go off-road. But I got to start with why this vehicle? Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks, Nathan. So uh, the reason I chose the uh, Grand Cherokee Trailhawk was a number of different reasons. Um, First, let's talk about the WK2 platform. Uh, I, I really like the, uh, this platform has been around for a long time and um, it's got great on-road capability as well as off-road capability. Yes, it's not as far-fletched as a Wrangler, but still it'll hold its own off-road. This is a 2018 model. Yep. So you had to go somewhere to buy it. How did that happen? What was your buying experience like? Yeah, I, so I went to a local dealership there in Colorado Springs uh -huh. and um, my buying experience was great. I, I, you know, usually walking on the lot, a lot of people don't know what they want, but I walked on the lot knowing exactly what I wanted. I did the research ahead of time, and uh, that's how I came to choose the, uh, the Grand Cherokee. I think the next thing is to take this vehicle off-road. We're here near Iron Clouds, which is just up the hill. Yep. And uh, to do a little bit of off-roading, we'll talk about your experience as you're driving the vehicle. And um, I'm actually really looking forward to it because the last time I took one of these off-road, uh, it was a diesel. So it had tons of torque, but there was very little drama. So I'm looking forward to a little bit of drama. All right. One of the things about air suspension is that it's definitely not as cushy. No, not yeah. at all. So from this point forward, then you're gonna, you're gonna be dealing with some spots where you'll, eh, you'll figure it out. The one thing about the Grand Cherokee that I've noticed is that it has a pretty long hood. It does. So seeing obstacles that you're coming up to are a little bit difficult. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a blind spot up here too, but um, you figure it out. Yep. Hopefully, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do this because they've already done it on the Ram. Uh, having a front camera available would yeah. be tremendous. It would be great. Yeah, cresting a hill and not being able to see the other side of it is rough. It's one of the reasons why the Wrangler is so awesome because it has a really short front deck and you can see over it super angular. A small puddle here, but yeah, handle that without a problem. No problem, no hiccups. Yeah, in fact, I don't think you lost any traction at all. At all. So underneath this vehicle, you have a bunch of armor that came standard with the package for the Trailhawk. Right. But it is missing a few things. For instance, it doesn't have rock rails. It which... does, actually. Oh, it does? It has stock Mopar rock rails. No kidding. Yeah. Excellent. That's what skid plates are for. Get that one? <laughs> This one has, I believe, the Hemi, right? It does. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple other choices that are out there. You could have had a V6. You could right. have even had the diesel, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Um, so why did you go for the Hemi? Yeah, um, so a couple different reasons I uh, chose the Hemi. 
The Hemi had a great power output. It's a, a proven and pride engine. I mean, it has 360 horsepower, 390 foot-pounds of torque, and uh, it does actually get decent mileage. I just did a trip to Crested Butte, and we we're getting over 24 miles a gallon with it. But um, the reason I chose this instead of the V6 and the diesel uh, was because with the diesel, I've done a lot of research on the forums, and if you don't drive them a lot uh, daily, like at least 20 miles a day, uh, they'll get gunked up and you'll start running into code issues um, around 50,000 miles. Mm. And the V6, it was a great option for me, but um, I might be towing in the future, so that's why I went with the Hemi. There's a lot of loose rock and whatnot in this area. And the one thing I really do like about the Grand Cherokee is its proportions. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 not too not big. Not too big, not too small. We just brought a <laughs> two pickup trucks up here. And it was the GMC um, Sierra 1500 AT4, which is one of my favorite trucks. It does great off-road, but it's a beast. And of course we brought up our Ram Rebel, and that has been modified severely. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, uh, both of those vehicles ran out of space further up. Really? Yep, that won't be a problem in this. This isn't as wide, and that is a good thing. All right, that route was handled perfectly. Yep. There's the traction control kicking in. Yeah, you could feel a little tiny bit of uh, loss of traction, and all of a sudden, the other wheels do exactly what they're supposed to do, and they apply power. So you just continue right, and to get it up and over this, now that ledge is severe to okay. where you could bottom out, so pull as far right as you can and then you're going to go left okay. and go really close to that tree. There you go. Start going towards that tree, obviously don't hit it, but just go towards it. And um, No scrapage? Oh, we're good. Yeah, and now when you have a chance, yep, you got it. Spectacular. All right. It's actually really nice having super comfortable seats off roading. I mean, the bolsters, <laughs> they do help. They really they do. They really help. help. These it's, are it's... actually the SRT, uh, same, same seats as the SRT. No kidding, I didn't yeah. know that. They just have a Trailhawk instead of a Trackhawk on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't know that. Well, they're very comfortable. Let's talk about the good stuff. Yeah. Modifications, you've Modifications. done a couple things. Yeah. Let's talk about it. And basically you can go right here and sure. you can show me everything. Yeah, so pretty much the first thing I did uh, when I got the Trailhawk was uh, get a little larger tire. Um, these are 265-65R18s and I went with the Falcon Wild Peaks uh, AT3s. It's pretty much the best bang for your buck. I tried to, you know, I did a bunch of research on BFGs and everything, but um, I went with these and I've been really happy with them. They haven't hit my gas mileage at all and uh, off-road they're stellar. They got a lot of bite on the sidewall here. And um, I don't know if you can get a shot here, but the next mod I did was a 1.5 uh, spacer from Bora. And it's a, a USA manufacturer. Um, they're great. They're, um, they're actually hub-centric spacers, uh, which is very important because it sits on your hub and it doesn't allow any shift in there. So that kicked uh, kicked the stance out a little bit and gave a little little wider stance for look, but also a little more off-road capability as well. Yeah, now you've sort of given yourself a natural lift on top of what is already there with these tires, which are bigger than the stock ones, right? right. So what is your total ground clearance now? Yeah, total ground clearance, I, I believe I was at 10.9 at stock, uh -huh. um, but now we're at 11.9 with an extra inch with this tire. So you've given yourself a one inch lift, you sit a little bit wider, which will help a little bit with articulation in some circumstances. Definitely. And uh, it looks cool. So yeah. <laughs> I managed to, to do all that at once. Awesome. Now let's talk about negatives. Anything about this vehicle so far strike you as negative? Yeah, in terms of negatives, um, it's it's hard to to actually find a negative. I've done a road trip in this car. I've had it off road. I would say the one negative that I wish I had was more articulation off road. Um, this has independent suspension all the way around, and a lot of off road prone vehicles. Uh, 
their body on frame and they have um, they have solid axles so they they allow a little more flex so you know you'll you'll get some dramatic effect with the camera you'll get a um, a wheel in the air from time to time but for the most part I love it right now you do have the air suspension I do. and as such it's very solid so when it lifts you all the way up it's not going to give you a whole lot of movement and that's part of the reason why there's a lack of articulation but you do have really good ground clearance and you also have it's the quadra drive 2 correct right? yes yeah and that is a pretty solid system and it's been proven to be fairly reliable so how long have you had the vehicle I've had the vehicle for about six months now. Okay, and no yeah. problems then so far? No problems at all. Okay, and you've taken it off-road before too? Yeah, uh, pretty extensively, yeah. Okay, so I guess the next thing is what are you gonna do with it in the future? Oh man, uh, <clears throat> the list goes on. It's, it's, it's what the wife will let me do, honestly. Um, you know, obviously- I'm hip, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, obviously I wanna do a, a roof rack um, and then I probably take the spare tire, put it on the back. But um, in terms of customization, there's really not much you need to do with the Trailhawk. Uh, it's pretty much plug and play out of the box. Now, knowing Tommy and Roman, they're going to yell and scream at the camera and at uh, the screen and say, wait a minute, you need lights and you need a snorkel. <laughs> so anything like that? Any of those types of little accessories? Uh, probably not. I mean, uh, snorkeling, I can't see the water level getting up to here. It's, it's mainly for looks and right. what do they call it, the high altitude intake? The, <laughs> yeah, I, I believe me, I don't necessarily buy it either. And besides, you don't want to add weight or too much weight to a vehicle, and adding chintzy things not, isn't necessarily a good idea. It depends on the person, of yeah. course. Yeah, if uh, you folks want to follow along the build, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at Grand Um You should be able to find me, and uh, thanks for watching. Well, Storm, I'll tell you, uh, articulation definitely is something that some people have an issue with, but the vehicle didn't have a problem going off-road. Mm -mm. But as you can see here, even on something that's really not too terribly bad, obviously there is a little bit of an issue. But once again, you have the right four-wheel drive system to get you out of trouble when you do lift the tire. Yeah, it's not an issue. With the Quadra Drive 2 system, it'll send up to 100% of the power at any wheel at any time that has traction. Well, I really appreciate you taking me along for this ride. A real joy being in this vehicle. Now, I kind of want one, which sucks because I just bought a Suzuki Samurai that I'm trying to explain <laughs> to my wife. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank hey, you, Nathan. For the Fastlane Car, the Fastlane Truck, TFL Off-Road, and TFL Classics. And I think I'm missing one. Oh, yeah, TFL Now. This is Nathan and my friend Storm. We'll see you guys next time.